In Raj Suri's Consumer Behavior class, students are assessing consumer experiences in a way that's very different from the traditional method of taking a survey. They are using an FNIR machine to measure neurological correlates, which can tell you what parts of the brain are active during an experience. This can provide information about how a person feels about something. Marketing researchers are beginning to use this to see how consumers react to a price point or a shopping experience. For these researchers, this window into the brain activity of consumers can provide big advantages. When consumers are completing a task, it lets us know what parts of the brain are active. So even if someone says they like a task, the brain might actually tell us a different story. This provides a different data point than the traditional way that market research has been done. The whole stream of research, the whole paradigm uh, is, is relatively new and few research researchers are working in this domain primarily because of lack of um, lack of expertise, lack of understanding of the devices plus the expense of the devices. So I think it is novel in terms of just a few people are able to do it. Dr. Suri says he'd like to see more of this type of research. From the practitioner's point of view, it's very helpful. Dr. Suri's work in pricing research involves asking people how much they would pay for an item. But that is always subject to what the consumer tells us, which can be affected by how they want to be perceived. In other words, they might not always be telling the truth. With these kind of devices, you can actually, some people are claiming that they can figure out where they actually are finding this is to be a good deal without they actually saying it. The machines, not just the FNIR machine, a lot of other machines, they're using those devices to assess those performance of actual consumers to give companies data about something. But whether that is valid or not is still new because this field is new and all those questions would resolve over time. But I think it's good to work on, on a novel way of looking at things and things which are really unseen, which we can only theorize that this is happening. But this is where we go to the actual physiology of a human being and try to understand this is where it is coming from. And that's why people are responding this way. And if we can understand that, then later on, more research can be done to try to uh, find ways by which one can overcome some of the uh, suboptimality which happens in, in people's decision making. Because we cannot really address suboptimality all the time, but this might help us understand it a little bit better.